Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music and we are going to continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method, Grade 1. Today we're going to look at page 25 and page 25 is a continuation on the last couple lessons that we've had dealing with chords. Okay, so we're still just developing our ability to do more things with this concept of chords. All right, At the top of the page it calls it bass solos with chord accompaniment. So essentially it's it's diving into this idea that chords have a bass note. In music this this happens all the time. So if we talk about a C chord the only three notes that we need to make a C major chord are C, E, and G. That's it, right? You can repeat those notes as many times as you want in different octaves or whatever, but that's a C chord, C, E, and G. So the lowest note that we play in the chord is the bass note of the chord, right? It's the bass. So a C would be the root of the C major chord. C, E, G, root C. Now that does not necessarily have to be the bass note, right? So this note, E, could be the bass note. It's still a C chord, but now E is in the bass. Or it could be this E here. That could be the lowest note. Or we can have G in the bass, low G down here, add that with maybe our fourth finger. That could be in the bass. So the exercises on this page are going to highlight that a little bit and kind of show you how that bass note can move around. Now if you were a bass player, you would become familiar with this and, and you would understand that uh, you know if the band was playing a C chord for four measures, you, you would understand as a bass player what your role was as far as, okay, am I going to be playing a root? Am I going to be playing, you know, what note am I going to be playing in that chord that makes the most sense with what the music is doing? So let's take a look really quick here. It gives you a little example at the very top on the right hand side a little bit and just kind of showing you, you have like a bass note beat on beat one and then you have two chords on beats two and three. And it talks to you a little bit about the stems, right? So when you have music written like this on guitar, which you will see when you're reading music on guitar, the bass note has the stem facing downward, and then the chord notes that are strung together, the stems are all facing upward. That's just kind of a typical way that they'll do it um, in notation, so you can see that it's done that way. But also you notice there's a rest above the bass note. And all that's telling you is that that note is by itself. There's no chord happening, it's just a note. And then the chords happen on beat two and three. So on that top example, it shows that we've got an E, and then we've got basically a C chord happening right after, a G, C, and E. So boom, chuck, chuck. It's the classic boom, chuck, chuck, boom, chuck, chuck. Bass, chord, chord, bass, chord, chord. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on there. Now if we move down to this, uh, continuing in this example, this is something that you should definitely try to play. This is not just like an example to look at. Um, but yeah, so this is um, kind of what we're looking at. We're still in the grade off box section. We haven't hit gliding along yet, but in this box we have uh, some music written of a bass chord chord, bass chord chord, bass chord chord. The first four measures are, are revolving around a C chord, and then we move to a G7 chord, and then a C, and then a G7, and back to a C. So kind of the idea here, what I would like you to try to do with this is figure out what those chord notes are. So all the beats two and three, the actual quarter notes, and figure out what that chord is. It's a G, C, and E. So that's always going to be our chuck chuck <laughs> if we're doing the boom chuck chuck 
those are our chords, right? And set your finger for what you need on that, and that's just going to stay there. And other than that, those bass notes we can move around with our other fingers as needed, okay? So we're going to leave our first finger on C, and we're going to try this. So the first four measures would be something like this. And then it's going to change chords, so move to a G7, so we're going to actually move our first finger up to that high F. Then it moves back to C. That's kind of the idea. I kind of walked through. I kind of fumbled through a couple little spots, but uh, I'm just trying to slowly walk you through what that looks like. So let me play it in time. So here's the metronome at 72. One, two, three, one, ready, and. Now you'll notice that even my bass fingers are not moving a lot, and if, if you notice that you can actually place all of your fingers in a spot on this and just leave it, and what it's doing, this exercise is tricking you into setting up your traditional C fingering and your traditional G7 fingering. You can find both of these fingerings two pages ahead on page 27 if you want to jump ahead and look. But those, those uh, chord fingerings will set you up to be able to play this without having to move your left fingers at all. So that's kind of the idea is we're just trying to get used to this chord situation, but also being aware that our bass note and the chord can act independently. Here's this exercise at 120 on the metronome. One, two, three, one, ready, and... So this is a good point to kind of bring up another concept of guitar that this book never really dives into, but that is an option uh, absolutely when you're playing music like this. And that is introducing finger style playing with the right hand. So this book sets you up as saying, okay, you're going to hold a pick and then it doesn't say anything else. I mean, it talks about doing down strokes and up strokes, but it... It's basically just saying use a pick all the time, but that's not necessarily always the case. And something like this very easily could be done using finger style picking. So this might be something that you experiment a little bit with on this. Now, what, typically what you would do on something like this is all of those bass notes are gonna be played with the thumb, while all of those afterbeat notes are gonna be played with your first, second, and third finger with your right hand, okay? Um, we're not going to go too much into, this lesson is not designed to get you like doing finger style picking or something, we're just kind of introducing this as an idea, something to play with. So you would do something like this.
something to maybe experiment with it. Try it out, see what you think. If you're like, oh man, I love the way that feels, then maybe looking into some more direction on, on finger style playing might be a direction for you to go. All right, cool. Let's take a look at gliding along. Back to using the pick. And here is the metronome at 72. Here we go. So I'm just playing the notes on the page. It does give us some chord symbols up above, but these are kind of for reference. Um, you can you can do that. We're learning the chords, that's great. But it does include a D minor chord, which we have not talked about at all yet. So you might hit that and be like, ah, what do I do with that? So right now we're just focusing on the notes on the page. Here we go. One, two, three, one, ready, and. So there it is at 72, that's what it sounds like, kind of gives you, give you a reference of what we're shooting for. And here it is at 120. One, two, three, one, ready, and. There you go, that's the idea. Again, the traditional chord shapes for C and G7, like you'll see um, two pages ahead on page 27, will basically make it so you don't have to move your fingers on your left hand much at all on this exercise. You will have to a little bit when it gets to that D minor chord, but uh, yeah, I mean. That kind of gives you an idea of, of what's going on there. You can still individually move fingers, and that's just as good to be practicing as moving along up and down those chords as well. But uh, just kind of have some options now. Good. Thank you for tuning in today. If you have any questions about this lesson and about the stuff that we're looking at, please feel free to ask. And as always, please subscribe. Check out my Patreon page if you are interested in more content that might help you out with these lessons, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Right.